What's up everybody? Hello everyone, how are you doing? Welcome. We are so excited. Um, can you just post in there in the comments if you can hear us loud and clear? Uh, we were having a little bit of trouble earlier. Hopefully we have got that worked out. Um, we are going to start off with an opening question. And our opening question is, have you used anointing oil? Because our lesson today is all about anointing oil. That is correct. And if so, what is your favorite kind? Yeah, what's your favorite scent? Because yes. a lot of people are, are big on, on, on scents. I like, I, I like my anointing oil to smell good. Good deal. We're going to wait for a few more minutes just to get uh, a few more jumped on here. Yep. Some people are saying they can hear. Some people are saying they can't hear. It's okay. very strange. <laughs> what about now? Can you hear now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear the words that I'm saying? What about now? Can you hear now? My phone that has no sound and yours does. So. I have. I can hear now. <laughs> yes, we got a few yeses. So the question is, is have you ever used anointing oil? Because our study tonight is on anointing oil. Okay. And if you have, do you have a favorite type or a favorite scent? Right. Good deal. Because yeah, I... Um, Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> Good deal. So, so we're just streaming on Facebook tonight. So those that, are, that usually watch on YouTube, we're up, gonna upload the video here, you know, just momentarily as soon as we get done. Uh, but like she said, so the question is, uh, have you used anointing oil? Because I, so I had a, a, a guy from church a, a while back that came up to me after one of our services at the Way Church when you know we we had a uh, one of those kind of explosive you know moves of the Holy Spirit like we have sometimes. Yes. And like the whole like last half of the service was just like people you know coming forward like to be healed and and you know for like the whole crowd came down was praying over folks and you know went and got my special oil that I brought back from Jerusalem and just started. Sweating it on folks and, and you know we were just praying and God was moving in a powerful way and the glory of God was just filling up the whole place and uh, it was awesome and uh, you know we, we all you know went out of there like feeling greasy from the oil but smelling yes. really good yes. right smelling really good and um, you know people were healed that day and delivered of all sorts of, of awesome you know just crazy stuff happened in the Lord yes. and then as we were you know getting everything shut down for church a, a guy that you know is, is a follower of Christ and has been for a long time, walked up to me, and he was like, Pastor Paul, he's like, what in the world is the deal with the oil? He said, why? He said, I've been in church all my life, and I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah. He said, why in the world do you, you know, bring people forward, and then you take some kind of oil and put on them, and everybody prays for them? Like, what, what is the deal with that? Yeah. And um, so I was like, we do it because it's in the Bible. Yeah. And, and hopefully we're going to cover all that. And I have had times before that, that women have come up to me and they're like, what is, what are you wearing? What is, what is that scent? <laughs> and, and I'm like, it's, it's anointing oil, but I'm not wearing it for, for the scent of it. Um, it is, so we're just going to cover first of just the understanding of anointing oil um, and the power behind it. So anointing oil is a symbol of your faith. And God's ability to cleanse and make things holy. Yes. Um, there is no magic behind the oil. The power is God. 
It can be used as a powerful tool, but only because of God and your faith in God. Otherwise, it's just it's just oil. Right. Um, but your faith behind it to the Lord, um, that's when the the power comes comes through. Um, without the faith um, and the anointing oil, um, there will ha it will ha not have any positive effects. It can strengthen your faith, but it cannot replace your faith. It can't be a replacement. Not at all. At all. It is just, um, it alone is just oil. But with it, it is a powerful tool that, um, that God can use. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's not a magic potion. No. It's not an elixir of any kind. No. It's, not, it's not any kind of witchcraft. It's no. nothing like that. Um, but there's different things that you can use it for. You can anoint your, yourself. Yes, uh, absolutely. You always Please have, do. You, um, you can do that daily. You have the power and the authority to anoint yourself daily. Um, you can anoint your, your homes. Um, you can use it for healing. You can use it for repentance. You can use it for thanksgiving. You can use it for illnesses. You can use it... Um, and if you have a new home, you can anoint your, your doorways and your windows and you can just pray simple prayers over those. Like God, make this, make this, uh, uh this house, um, holy ground. Right. Um, or if you're having just this, the spiritual problems in your home, Lord, cleanse this house. You can, um, anoint your, your car. Um, Lord, keep it. Keep it on uh, in between the lines. Right? <laughs> Come on, yes. Um, I have took many youth group trips with the kids and anointed just the vehicles that we were in and seen God work in miracle, you know, in miracles and just kept us out of so many accidents. Right? Need to watch that. Um, you can anoint your husbands, um, <laughs> and you know, you can anoint your your children. Um, I've done this for many many years now, but there's so many. Things that you can use this powerful tool for God for. Absolutely. And so that brings us to the scriptures concerning anointing oil. Yeah. So the very first place that anointing oil shows up in scripture is uh, in the book of Genesis in chapter 28 verses 18 and 19. And the Bible says this. So Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone he had put under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on its top. He called the name of that place Bethel. Quite a coincidence that that would be the first place that they used the anointing oil. Yes. <laughs> then in Genesis 31, 13, while God was speaking to Jacob in a dream, God refers to this act as one of anointing. Uh, he says, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar, where you made a vow to me, now rise and leave this land and return to the land of your birth. That's Genesis 31, 13. Um, the Hebrew uh, word that we translate as anointing is mashach. Uh, it means to smear or wipe, uh, or wipe or to spread a liquid. Yes. Um, talks about it in, in Deuteronomy 28 and Micah 6. And um, basically the, the use of anointing oil was to set a thing or a person apart as holy yeah. or dedicated to the Lord. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's the basic premise of this whole thing, that whatever we're wiping this oil on, whatever we're smearing this oil on, is set apart, dedicated, yeah. devoted to the Lord. So it's marking them, yes. It's marking them, kind of like what I was talking about the other night when I was preaching. Yes, yeah. like you mentioned about being marked by God. So we're saying that this, whatever this object or person is, they are set apart and they belong to the Lord now. Yeah. Um, it was also used to confer authority, um, which we'll talk about in a second. So real quick, some of the places where it shows up in Scripture. Um, the consecration of the priests, and I'll read that Scripture in a minute. In Exodus 30, they uh, made the holy anointed, the very first holy anointing oil, to uh, by a specific recipe to anoint the priests that were going to serve the Lord, to anoint the... Uh, uh, also, to, to anoint the objects that were going to be used in the temple. Yeah. Um, so, so that is in Exodus 30, a couple other places. Uh, they used it to consecrate God's choice as king. So they anointed Saul. And then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David that would be king of Israel. It's in 1 Samuel 16, 13. Um, number three, the Messiah had the title of anointed. Yeah. Uh, in Psalm 2, 2, it says this. Why are the nations in an uproar and the people devising a vain thing? The kings of the earth shall take their stand and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointed. Uh, speaking of the Messiah. Um, anointing oil symbolizes the filling and empowering of the Holy Spirit. 
a couple of different places. First Samuel 16, 13, Matthew 25, 1 through 13, Acts 1, 8. This is the one that I like, Zechariah 4, 1 through 6. The Bible says this, Then the angel who was speaking to me returned and roused me um, as a man who was waking from his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? And I said, I see, and behold, a lampstand, all of gold, and its bowl on top of it. And seven lamps on each of seven spouts belonging to each of the lamps which are on top of it, and two olive trees by it, one on the right, one on the left. And I said to the angel who was speaking, What are these, my Lord? So the angel who was speaking with me answered and said, Do not, do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by my might or my power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. So the oil is the symbol yeah. of the Holy Spirit, of yeah. the living God. Uh, Jesus was called anointed with the Holy Spirit, Luke 4, 18. I've been anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Um, number six, God anointed the believers with the Holy Spirit, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 21 and 22. Now he establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us in God, who also sealed us and gave us the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. There's that seal again, that yeah. mark that the God puts on us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. And when we anoint with oil, we're symbolizing that. Yeah. Uh, number seven, uh, and this is a big one, and this is what I talked about with the gentleman that had talked to me after service. Anointing with oil also symbolizes the healing work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 14. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call on the elders of the church there to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And, and I think it's there is, is a good time to talk about where you always have the authority to, to anoint yourself. But I think that it's important that you make sure that you are praying out and um, just really being in tune with Holy Spirit of who you should be um, uh, anointing. That is and correct. always, always ask their permission before you anoint them. Absolutely. I mean, you don't just like, and, and I've been in, you know, involved in some situations where people just like came at somebody with some oil or whatever, yeah. and, and, and that's not appropriate all, yeah. at all. Uh, and so what we should do is, is make sure that we have permission from yes. somebody before that we would, would anoint them with oil. No, yes. no question about it. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And, and I think that some people um, wonder why it's just certain people that they call up um, during the times of, of anointing. And it, it's biblical. It calls for the elders and the, and the church leaders to anoint them and to pray over them. Absolutely, and and so we and, and but in so in Mark chapter six verse thirteen it says that the the disciples and apostles anointed many people with oil for healing and and cast out demons and all those things. But yeah, you want you want your mature believers to be the ones that are anointing people with oil yeah. and and praying over their you know for their healing. Yeah, there should always always be permission involved, no question about it. But you can always have an anointed life. Come on, right. Yes, a life that's set apart. A life that's set apart. And and that is, is the oil of our life, right? I mean, that's just like digging in deeper. Like that's just, that that's, that's in your word. That that's, you know, just going deeper with him. And that is um, just being in your word. And that's being in your, in prayer constantly. And that's just communicating with Holy Spirit. I mean, that's um, the anointed life is, is what I'm searching for. Come on. Well, like we said, the, the, the oil is just symbolic. Yeah. Of the Spirit. The anointing comes from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The anointing comes from the Spirit. The anointed life comes from the fact that the Holy Spirit is in our life. And flowing out. Yeah. That, that, that's exactly right. That's like exactly that Bible right. edition of the, you, Where's the Bible at that, is just, that has that oil? In the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? It came out of Georgia somewhere. Yes. Right. Sure. Yes. We want to overflow with the power of the Holy Spirit in every aspect of our life. And, and this, the, the oil is just a symbol of that. It, it, it's it's kind of like how, you know, we, we say, you know, when, when Brent and I and you, when we lead the gospel invitation, we tell people that we're, we're going to help them pray in, in, in order to connect with God, in order to receive salvation. But they don't have to pray to receive salvation. Right. They have to believe and they have to surrender. Yeah. You don't have to pray, but to pray helps them focus. It's the words that, of the prayer help you focus on God and connect with Him. It's the same with the oil. You don't have to have the oil to be healed. Yeah. You don't have to have the oil to be delivered. You don't have to have the oil to be set free or experience the power of God. What it does, what the oil does, is it helps us to focus. You know, it helps us to focus. And, and it gives us a focus point and it helps us to connect with God. It's one of those things that he set up as a means of grace to allow us to connect with him in, in a different way. Amen. Amanda says that uh, last night's service that Carly had anointed um, a baby boy and he is now talking. Praise the Lord. 
Man, come on. Praise God. Yes. Man, that is incredible. See, and, and God uses that and God works through that and God's manifested many, many miracles in my life through the anointing of oil. I mean, I, I you know, I, I can go ahead and share this story really quickly before we get into the actual making of the oil is, yeah. you know, I went through kind of a time in my life where, look, I believed in God. I believed in salvation by Jesus Christ. I believed in the Holy Spirit to give us the fruits of the Spirit. And I even believed that God healed people, just not me. Right? right yeah. And I believe that God healed people just not through me. Because I prayed for 50 million people in a row and hadn't even really seen any healing take place. Yeah. And and I was starting to get a little, I'm not going to lie, I was starting to get a little frustrated. Like, man, God, why why can't I heal people? The, the apostles heal people, and I see Carly can heal people, and Angela heals people, and Karen, and, and why can't I heal anybody, you know? And, and I was getting a little frustrated. And then, um, you know, some of you probably know the story. Like, I had an upper style cord injury. Uh, to the point where I couldn't even move my hand. Like, I could barely move my left hand. had zero strength in it. Yeah. I mean, none. And, and, you know, the doctors told me that I would probably never really lift weights again and that that part of life was kind of over and whatever. And so right before I was about to preach a funeral there in the church, uh, Miss Karen and, and Billy Gore and, and a couple other, the, the you know, mature believers of the church sent me over in the kids' room. And, and right there in front of the screen in, yeah. the, in the kids' room, they laid hands on me, anointed me with oil, and prayed over me, and I felt something pop in my back, and I was instantly healed. Mm -hmm. I mean, instantly healed from a debilitating spinal cord injury. And and you know, and I'll stand up and tell that testimony to any neurosurgeon in the world because it's the God's honest truth. Yeah. And and, and I've complete competed in a powerlifting contest after that. Right after, yeah. Right at, I mean, you know, within a couple of months after that. Yeah. You know, I was able to, to regain all that strength back just based on the healing power of God that can happen like that. Yeah. And uh, can still feel the you know the the essence of that oil going on my forehead and just and, and God reminded me right there, look, I can do it for you. And then from there, started to do it through me because yeah. he, he used that to increase my faith. Absolutely. And when he increased my faith, it began to not just go in me, but it also began to flow out of me. Yeah. You know. So yeah. It's good stuff. But yeah, yeah, good stuff. Yes. Um, and you know we we you know we we tell the the story about how Logan was healed, right? And they anointed him with oil that day, right in yeah, the middle of right the waiting room, and T.J. Yeah. Samson with all kinds of people looking at us, really yeah. strange. Yeah. So uh, Beth and Danny came into the room and uh, into the waiting room there and, and anointed our child right in the middle of the, the hospital waiting room. And yeah, I'll never miss that. <laughs> so uh, Logan was uh, he was five, and uh, Beth and they, they told us that he had some heart problems and it was looking really serious. Sure. And uh, they came in. And he was scared, and, and we were scared. Um, and uh, they they anointed him, and the whole room just looked at us like we had tentacles coming out the side of our heads. Yes. And um, I'll never forget the prayers. You know, they said, um, "Lord, make his you know his heart is enlarged, but just make it full of you." Come on. And um, when they came out of the when you, the testing, they said he has an enlarged heart, and we don't know why, but it pumps just fine, and he's going to be fine. You know. And Hallelujah. Just, you know, and then they said it's it's a miracle that nothing else is going to be wrong, and you know we just are just staying in the faith that you know everything is is good. Yes. Yes. And um, yeah, absolutely. And and so what we want to do is we just want to make our own anointing oil tonight. Yes. And we just want to show you how we're going to do that. Um, you know, because it's, it's cool to buy the this thing of anointing oil. I guess you can still order it online. You can't go to the Lifeway and buy it anymore, Even right? if we had a Lifeway, yeah, we couldn't go to it right you know, now. Yeah, we couldn't go to it right now anyway, but they, they closed all those stores. So, you know, you can order yes. it online or whatever. But, but really, when you do that, you don't know what you're getting. No. I mean, you honestly don't. And, 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 and not that it really matters anyway, but I mean, you know, you don't know what kind of synthetic whatever that you're getting. No, because the difference, because the anointing oil that I had been purchasing for years is not the same anointing oil that we got in in, in Jerusalem at all. Right. I was like, what is this? This is so different from what we had we had been buying. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so different. Um, but I just want to start off with, with prayer. Yes, um, let's do that. First. Um, Lord, we just we just come to you, and I pray that you just you just cleanse this room. I pray that you cleanse this this house. I pray that um, everyone that is listening, Father, I pray that you just search all of our hearts. I pray that we come to you in repentance right now. I pray that we live that anointed life, Father. I pray that we live holy lives. I pray for humility. 
I pray for meekness but boldness. I pray that we live upright, Lord. I pray that we stand firm on your word. I pray that you cleanse us, Lord. I pray that we um, are pure for you, Lord. I pray that you just uh, anoint us, Father, that you put a hedge of protection around us. Father, I pray that as we make this, that we make this in faith and believing in your power, that we are nothing alone without you, Father, that all of the power comes for you, Father. And I pray that we use it in your will, Father. I pray that we use it for you. And I pray all the glory goes to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. Good deal. So the recipe for the holy anointing oil that was used to consecrate the priests and also to consecrate the, you know, the, in, the internal workings of the tabernacles in the book of Exodus in chapter 30. And the Bible says this, starting in verse 22. Then the Lord said to Moses, Collect choice spices, 12 and a half pounds of pure myrrh, 6 and a quarter pounds of fragrant cinnamon, 6 and a quarter pounds of fragrant calamus, uh, 12 and a half pounds of cassia, uh, as measured by the weight of the sanctuary shekel. Also get one gallon of olive oil. Like a skilled incense maker, blend these ingredients and make a holy anointing oil. Use the sacred oil to anoint the tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant, the table, all its utensils, the lampstand, all its accessories, and the incense altar, the altar of burnt incense, and all the utensils, and the wash basin, the stand, consecrate them to make them absolutely holy. After this, whatever touches them will also become holy. Anoint Aaron and his sons, also consecrating them to serve as priests. And say to the people of Israel, This holy anointing oil is reserved for me from generation to generation. It must never be used to anoint anyone else. And you must never make any blend like it for yourselves. It is holy, and you must treat it as holy. Anyone that makes a blend like it or anoints someone other than a priest will be cut off from the community. That's a pretty serious warning. Yes. Um, the next part is about the incense. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Gather fragrant spices, resin droplets, mollusk shell, gallibum, and mix these fragrant spices with pure frankincense, weighed out in equal amounts. And that was to make the incense that would be burned in, uh, in, at the, uh, the incense altar inside the tabernacle. Now, we are not going to make the anointing oil exactly by this recipe. Uh, obviously, the number one reason... Well, one of the reasons is that we don't have room to have 12 and a half pounds of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to make a much smaller batch of it, obviously. Uh, the other reason is that I believe that this special recipe for anointing oil was set apart for this specific time yeah. to anoint the tabernacle and the Levitical priests. And so that's why, and, and it says don't make that exact anointing oil. Yeah. You know, and, and we are kings and priests, don't get me wrong, but Peter, you know, chapter 1 or, or verse 9, uh, we are priests and in, in the you know the order of machine deck that that is the truth and we are priests everybody that's filled with the holy spirit I, I i still don't think that that this is the exact recipe that we should make no. uh, but i do want to use the original ingredients to make the anointing oil that we're going to make so basically what we're going to do is we are not going to use this to consecrate the temple no. or the priests we're going to use this for healing yeah. we're going to use this for protection we're going to use this for worship yeah. and so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute the cassia for frankincense, from the incense, yeah. right? Uh, for two reasons. Now, number one, because incense is the fragrant, or, you know, odor that we want to give off to God, and and it's you know it's also meant to be an object that's used in the worship of the Father. So we want to use frankincense. And so we're going to tell you where we got these ingredients, um, and that will help. So the olive oil, we tried to get what we could get locally. We got locally. Um, the this came from Walmart. It is easy to get. This is just a uh, version of olive oil. You can get it at any Walmart, anywhere, pretty easy. Sure. Um, frankincense was a little bit harder because um, you don't want to use the incense frankincense. Like it's not the really incense easy. is not actually the frankincense. No. We got the real resin uh, that comes from the you know the source. This was on Amazon. It was yes. So do you want to pull that closer or? I can just carry okay. it over there. Actually, yeah. I was just going to pour it in here. Sure. If you pour it closer, you can show it grounded. Okay. I was just going to take it to it. but So that's what it looks like. Yeah. If you get the real deal frankincense, and then we use this, this uh, mortar and, and pestle to, to grind it up. Which is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> It is hard. It takes some takes some work. You got to put a little elbow grease into it, which should eventually it's this one turn into this. 
Right, so eventually it turns into that kind of a powder, okay? And this is the cinnamon, and so you can get the cinnamon just as a spice that's already ground in any uh, grocery store. And then we're going to add the frankincense. And then you want to show this one? Sure. And then this is the myrrh. And so myrrh, as you know, is one of the, besides the frankincense that also got brought by the wise men when Jesus was born, also uh, myrrh was amongst the gifts. I always preached that it was weird for them to bring uh, something that's usually used to, at a funeral for the embalming process to a baby shower, but that's what they did. And, and so the myrrh is, is a sweet smelling fragrance and that's one of the things that goes in this mixture as well. Right. And then the last one is calamus root. And so the calamus root is one of the things that's called for in the recipe there that they used in the original anointing oil. It's the root of a, of a certain plant that grows there uh, in, you know, in the Holy Land. And so you take it and grind it up and then it comes into a powder form and looks something like this. Yes. And... Good deal. And so those are the four ingredients that we are going to use for this special anointing oil that we are making. Mm, I'm going to take them out. <laughs> and then we're going to put in our olive oil. How much of this? Yes, we're going to use a whole cup of the, of the olive oil there. And it takes a little time to pour out of the spout. Maybe we should have took the <laughs> took the spout out of it, but you know, whatever. Good deal. And so now we've got all the ingredients. So all three of these you can purchase on Amazon, and then you can get your cinnamon and your olive oil at your local Walmart or any, 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 grocery, any store. grocery store. That smells amazing. <laughs> it does smell amazing. It smells really, really good in our house right now. let it sit. Some add, um, what, what did they add to it for a scent? So some people add other scents to it, like lemongrass. I know that's yeah. a really popular essential oil that people use, and some people add like, lemongrass to it, and, and some of the other, you know, some of the other scents that they, that they put with it. Um, there you go. Yeah, absolutely. So then you can get different vials to put these in. Um, we just got these from um, Amazon. Make sure that you find some that have tops that are easily, we go on that have really good lids. Um, this one is a favorite of mine. This one you can put on and it is a roll-on. Love the roll-ons. <laughs> All right, good deal. And, and so then what we want to do, uh, now that we've got our oil mixed up, is we just want to pray a special blessing uh, over the anointing oil that, that we've made. And uh, we would ask all of you to help us pray uh, right now because we know that God hears us wherever we're at. And uh, we just want to ask you just to help us bless the oil tonight. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to come before you. 
Uh, thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you that Jesus ascended so that the Holy Spirit would descend, would fill us, would overflow from us, God. And we thank you for this great symbol that you've given us of your power and your glory and your spirit. Father, and I just pray a special blessing over this oil, God, that it would be used for healing, that it would be used for protection, that it would be used to bring you glory and worship, God. I pray that you just pour a special blessing on that you anoint this oil, God, by your glory, by your spirit, by your holy power, by your sacrifice, God, uh, that it would be a sweet-smelling savor to you, God, and it would be the symbol of your spirit in the lives of the people, Father. We pray a special blessing over this oil, God that wherever it goes and whoever it touches, that they'll experience you, that they'll connect with you, God, that they'll glorify you, Father. We love you and we praise you and we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yes, yes and our all is blessed. Yes. We love you and thank you for joining in for our first study of anointing oil. We know this was the basic study and maybe we'll do uh, part two of We could go really, really in yes, depth and spend hours on so here, much. but yeah, there's so much that goes along with it, but we just wanted to give you a little hint of, of what it looks like and, and, and the uses of it. And, you know, and, and ultimately though, you can use any oil to anoint with. You can use the, the regular olive oil in your cabinet. It's fine. Yes. But man, this smells good. It does smell really good. <laughs> and, and here's the other thing. Uh, for those of you that join us tomorrow for our Emerge service... Uh, we're going to bottle this stuff up and we're going to have it there uh, to put in your hands yes. because we know that right now people need healing. Right now people need to connect with God. Right now people need protection. And uh, we just want to give you this as another tool in your tool chest, another weapon in your arsenal uh, of the things and the power of the living God in your life. So we want to give this to you. Uh, so whoever you know shows up tomorrow night for Emerge, man, we just want to put this in your hands. And even if you're not able to come tomorrow night, no pressure at all for you to do that. Uh, we'll make sure that if you want some that you get some too. Yes. All right. Send us an address. We will mail it to you. We will get it to you or, somehow. We'll kind of let you come pick it up. I mean, yes. whatever it is, we, we, we want to get this in your hands. But anyway, um, man, we love you guys. We're so love blessed you. to be yes. part of an awesome church. And uh, We will Jesus, see everybody tomorrow. Yes. We will. We will. In Jesus' name.